Hey there, it's me, it's Sam. Um, you know, I wanted to do a follow-up, a part B of the free stuff message that I did last night. And as I'm sitting here fussing about with uh, getting the picture just right and trying to do the lighting for this video, I realized that really none of that stuff really matters. I have a computer that is enables me to connect with people this way when I'm sitting here talking to myself um, or to you through the technology. We just finished an hour or so ago the Monday morning Financial Grace Prayer. I have the capacity to type and to edit and to do all of those things. The technology is one of those uh, it's not free, obviously, but it's one of those things that is easy to take for granted. And uh, you know, I, for one, love the convenience of it, but I also don't like the fact that it isolates us. And of course, I think we all probably have this love-hate relationship with technology. And I know that the big, big, big challenge that face that we all face with technology is how to stay connected. And so here I am connecting with you now, and I wanted to share the part B of the free stuff. Despite the fact that the lighting is not right and uh, there's probably some background noises, I realized that in my message yesterday, I hadn't really shared the key piece of what... Um, of where this whole concept of free stuff starts, which is our, the free gift that we all have through, um, through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus on the cross. We have free access to our Heavenly Father. And that means that we have free access to His unlimited creativity, his unlimited resources, his unlimited love, and unmerited favor. We have access to his promises as written in the word, and we also have access to his promises that he speaks to us through the living word as we spend time um, in the word. And all of those things are where he will guide us and direct us to uh, to fulfill his plans and purposes on the earth. And that means that his good plans for our life are connected to something far greater than ourselves. And that means that our purposes are fulfilled as we help fulfill somebody else's purposes and so on and so on and so forth. He wants us to connect with him and then through each other. And Jesus made that possible. And so I wrote a couple of notes because if we miss the fact that the free gift of salvation from our Creator um, is, uh, if, if we don't look at that and instead we just look at what we can see, then we're actually directing our attention to the, um, the domain of the world and not the... Um, not the relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father. What happens is we learn to see in, in the, um, the, what we think is tangible, forgetting that all of that was created through Father by the Spirit and we have access to that. That we don't live by what we can see, we live by faith. And so cultivating that faith and recognizing that free gift is ultimately where our fulfillment of all of these things that we desire happen. And he will guide us in how to do that because he's very clearly stated how he is our shepherd, he is our good shepherd, and that we lack no good thing. And so in him we have power and authority as his children and yet outside of him we look at what we can touch and what we can feel and we can have this sense of lack and this void and in that void is where we build walls uh, that are in part based on pride and self-control in part they're walls that help us deal with what we can see 
instead of breaking down those walls to deal with what we can't see. And so yesterday we talked about, or I shared about recognizing all the free gifts that we have so that we can then connect with the Lord in order to get his guidance on how we can plant those in order to produce something in the real world. Um, in the the in the tangible, in the natural, because there's a connection between the spiritual and the natural world. Of course, it was the spirit that breathed life into all of this, and so I hope that makes sense. I hope that is a blessing for you. Uh, right below these notes, I have a a, um, a note that I wrote down from something that I w um, heard this weekend, and that is that biblical hope is the joyous expectation of what God has promised. And so uh, we also are quite familiar, most people are, with hope deferred makes the heart grow sick and a desire fulfilled is the tree of life. Well, we know through the word that Jesus is the tree of life and we know that if we have a joyous, expect, if, if hope is a joyous expectation, then hope isn't going to be deferred unless we let it. Hope is right here and right now whenever we come into his presence and whenever we then connect with him in the spiritual and in the natural so that he can guide us for how he's going to, how he wants us to make those connections. And so the free gift of salvation is what starts everything. And as we connect with him, he will guide us to connect with our natural. And a big piece of that is he does not want us to live in any kind of poverty. Poverty in our spirit, in our physical body, in our bank accounts. He wants us to prosper. And um, as we read in 3 John 2, my, uh, my brothers and sisters, I pray that in all you prosper in everything, even as your soul prospers, so that you're in good health, and uh, even as your soul prospers, and your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions, and those things as we live from day to day, they, um, as we are fulfilled through him and not through our natural, he will help um uh, bridge that gap that we currently see as a yawning chasm because we're focused on the natural and not on him as the fulfiller of the, the um, of, of, of life. He comes into those places, gives us the strength in order to then have the power to go out and create the wealth to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, to cast out the demons that keep us in this state of oppression and this state of poverty. And all of that, of course, we still have to navigate the day-to-day -day in uh, our bank accounts and our credit. We still have to put gas in the car and go and buy groceries. And so in all of that, I pray that we connect to him and recognize that uh, his breath, that he is the bread of life and it's his breath that gives us the power to navigate the world that we live in, in order to live fulfilled, powerful, triumphant, and victorious lives. So have a blessed day, everybody. I look forward to sharing a lot more with you soon. And uh, make sure that you sign in at financialgrace.org. There's some, uh, a, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but it, um, about a month ago, I was awoken in the night with God downloading something that I was writing in my head, and it was a seven-step prayer strategy for financial increase uh, based on the Lord's Prayer. And uh, through that, I am also working on the next step, which is a teaching series on the triumph over money, which again is how do we connect with him in the day-to-day -day reality that we live in. Some of that is recognizing what's been going wrong and what's been good. 
what's working and what's not working um, and putting it together sequentially. And so make sure that you sign, sign in to receive the newsletter at financialgrace.org and then you'll be the first to receive notices of some of these kinds of things that are upcoming. Well, have a great day and uh, God bless.